Hey, everybody. Welcome to Prophetic Lifestyles with Bernard Bolton, and welcome to our Friday edition on ministry and the marketplace. Really excited to be on with you today, and I'm really excited to be sharing um, today's talk with you. Today, I want to talk about uh, having an edge uh, in ministry and the marketplace. So, uh, but before we get into that, uh, I want to ask that you would subscribe to our channel, uh, like this video, share it with others, and also uh, go to our description box and subscribe to our Substack. Uh, that's a that's a a new a newsletter, even though we've been doing it since January. So it's been more than six months now, but we've been putting out. Um, uh, articles on that newsletter uh, three times a week. And um, right now, our Friday, on Fridays, we deal with the topic of culture. And so we're looking at Generation X, which is the generation I'm a member of, those that were born from 1965 to the early 80s, and then uh, Generation, uh, the Millennial Generation, which follows after Generation X. So, uh, so go to our Substack, subscribe to our newsletter, and I, I think you'll find those articles very interesting, okay? So let's get into today's conversation. And on Friday, we devote our videos to our, to our coaching business. And even though uh, we have a ministry and we're, our ministry is prophetic, and we do a lot of prophetic training and prophetic mentoring. But on uh, Fridays, ministry in the marketplace, we like to devote time to both ministry because I've been in ministry for almost 40 years. It'll be 40 years in March of 2024. And then we've been in business since 2012. So we've got 11 years in the business of publishing and book writing and coaching. And so, um, and so we're navigating between the two worlds and I want to help you if you are, if you are a ministry, whether that's full-time ministry, vocational ministry, or if you are, uh, if you minister according to your gifts, see, we're all, all believers are ministers. We're just not all vocational ministers. We all don't have a call to the ministry but we all minister, okay, according to our gifts and our abilities, whether that's spiritual or natural, okay? And so we're we're targeting, even though we're, we, we want to really expand it, but uh, those in ministry, those in vocational ministry, we want to coach you and mentor you in how to, how to, how to do ministry, but then how to be effective business people in the marketplace, okay? What we see a lot of ministers doing is they take their ministry into the marketplace. They take the marketplace into the ministry and that creates problems. So uh, so as a ministry marketplace coach, uh, we help those in ministry navigate in the marketplace. And then those who are in the marketplace uh, who may have a calling to ministry, a vocational calling to ministry. We want to help you navigate because we've been able to do it. It took us a while, though, but we've been able to do it. And we believe that in this current era that we're in, in this pay decade that we're in, we believe that God is raising up ministers for both ministry and the marketplace, and he's raising up uh, marketplace people for both marketplace and ministry. And so, and so if I can help you to navigate between that, that's part of what we do as a coach. Okay. So today we want to talk about the edge. How, how, what is it that gives you an edge in both ministry and the marketplace? Because there are a lot of vocational ministers who are still doing ministry from a traditional standpoint. So they are uh, when I say traditional, I mean that they are their ministry is limited to a traditional uh, place. They can only do ministry in a church. They have to have a pulpit. 
They have to have an office. They have to have a title. Uh, and so they limit themselves to a congregation. And many of you who have a call to vocational ministry, rather than create your own place, I happen to be connected, my apostle and my spiritual mentor, Apostle Teresa Harvard Johnson, I have watched her, I have watched her create a place for now the last, uh, I believe it's been six years now, but the Scribal Conservatory Worship and Art Center, we meet every Saturday. We've been meeting every Saturday um, uh, since July. And so if you wanna join us on any Saturday, please uh, contact us and we'll get you that information. But I have watched her build the Scribal Conservatory instead of waiting for a place in a traditional ministry, waiting for some bishop or apostle to give her a place, she has created a place by the hearing of the Lord. And it's a great place. And so uh, uh, we've been meeting online during the start of the pandemic. Now we're back in live meetings. And I've also watched her build over the 11 years that I've been connected with her. I watched her build a marketplace through the School of the Scribe, which is a premier phenomenal school for those who have scribal uh, calling and scribal identity, all right? And so she is a great example of the person who is both in, in ministry and the marketplace, but but many of you are stuck in, in a traditional setting. You're waiting. See, when I started preaching in the 1980s, I started preaching in a denominational church. And it was the, it was the pattern that either, either you preached at the church that you were licensed at or called. If, you know, the pastor gave you an opportunity, you would preach or you would wait until churches started calling you. Well, uh, I had favor in the early days of my ministry. I think part of it was because I was the son of a pastor, even though my father had been dead 10 years uh, when I started in my preaching ministry. But then my, uh, my pastor, who was my spiritual father, he really pushed me. And he told other pastors, so he would give me opportunities to preach. And he had a lot of a lot of preachers in the church. He was a father. And so he had up at one time, there was up to maybe seven associate ministers in our church. It was a small church of about a hundred, but because of the fathering anointing on him, uh, he drew other other ministers, other sons. At that time, only women, you know, only men were preaching. And so he drew other men to him, but I was his special son. I, I was his favor. I was his Joseph. And so he pushed me. So as a result of being the, the, the son of a deceased pastor and having my pastor push me, uh, I had a lot of opportunities. I actually did a revival. I did my first revival the summer after I started preaching. I started preaching in March and during the summer, there was another pastor who had come out of the church and he had been a deacon under my father. And, and so he invited me to his church and I started getting an invitation to church. And then in 1985, I got invited to my first large church. This church uh, had about, about 800 members and they invited me to come and do a youth day. And I got a love offering. They raised me a love offering of about $400. That was the most money I had ever received in ministry. And so I had favor uh, in my ministry, but that's how that's how we did ministry and how we grew in ministry, okay, back then. And so many of you are still in that traditional mindset that you're waiting for a place. You're waiting for a church to call you. You're waiting for an invitation. You're waiting for your pastor to let you preach. And, and in this time, we're in a day where the Lord is, is sending ministers in vocational ministry. He's sending you to create. So whether you are a preacher or a teacher, whether you know, you're an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, evangelist, pastor, the Lord is calling you 
to create a place for you to, to fulfill your vocational ministry, whether that's online, as I'm doing now. And I listen, I enjoy doing my ministry online. I'm, I'm really enjoying it more than doing it since I've been in Atlanta. You, you know, I have a, I've only had opportunities to, uh, to preach and teach in the meetings that Apostle Teresa has. Um, so it has not been given to me to go outside. I'm fine with that because I can come here on YouTube and I can preach and teach and there's going to be a, a, a group of you. Sometimes up to 20 people will be on with me while I'm on live and then others will watch uh, the teachings that I give, the preaching that I give, the, uh, the exhortational uh, edifying videos that I make here on YouTube. So I am enjoying this new place of ministry that that I am creating as the Lord, the Lord see see the Lord called me to YouTube, and even back in 2021, when I was like done with social media, and and the Lord confirmed my distaste for a lot of the traditional platforms, and I heard the Lord say, if you stay on YouTube and build on YouTube, I'm going to send you people for both ministry and the marketplace. And I've seen the Lord do that. I've seen him do that. And so uh, I love being here on YouTube, but listen, if you're doing, if you have a call to ministry, then you need to connect with a people. You need to connect with the people. Now, even though I'm here on YouTube in mid doing ministry, I could I connect with people one on one. I have virtual meetings through Zoom uh, with persons here on uh, with with persons. Okay, I've I've met people uh, personally. We've met at meetings, and so my ministry is not just limited to YouTube, but YouTube becomes the entrance or the doorway. All right. And so, okay, so I'm doing a lot of talking, but let me get to what I wanted to talk about today. What is the edge? Okay, what is the edge? Even in the marketplace, most of the people who connect with me for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, the spiritual mentoring that I offer, which is, of course, a part of ministry, not the marketplace. My uh, coaching is marketplace. Uh, the group coaching that I offer the majority of the people who now connect with me, they are connecting with me through YouTube, okay? And so even when you're in business, okay, YouTube can be an incredible place for you to connect, to build your business, to build your ministry, and to release what you have to offer to people who are waiting to connect with you. So today I want to talk about the edge, okay? The edge, what is the edge? of ministry in the marketplace, all right? And that one thing is prophecy, prophesying, to prophesy. To prophesy means to speak, to declare, and to say words by the influence of Holy Spirit, who is the person who lives in us. Holy Spirit is the one who came to live in us, and he empowers us. And by him, we prophesy to bring forth words by Holy Spirit, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, uh, words from the Lord, prophetic words, all right? To declare, prophesying is declaring. I'm about ready to preach, but I, try, I need to tone it down because this is not our preaching time. But to declare the word of the Lord to a person or to a group of persons. Now, here's the thing about prophesying is that when you are prophetic, um, prophetic is not just a ministry function. It's not just something that, that comes on when you're in ministry or in a ministry context, but you prophesy and prophesying is also what you do in the marketplace. It's just different. Okay, so when when I prophesy in ministry, okay, there is a there is a different, there's an expectation. I'm edifying. I'm speaking into the believer's life. Okay, 
I am ministering to a believer. I'm ministering to a child of God, to a follower of Jesus Christ, okay? And, and I'm saying to them what Holy Spirit is saying within my spirit, okay? And that is what prophesying is. It is, it is, it is, the, it is the edifying and the building up of another believer. But, when I'm in the marketplace, prophecy comes forth as ideas. Uh, prophecy comes forth as, uh, it, you know, it comes forth as, um, I want to use the word agenda, but agenda can sometimes have a negative connotation. But I'm speaking in a positive connotation because when you're building a business and you're doing it by the spirit, and you have the gift of prophecy, then many times your ability to prophesy is going to manifest even in your business is just that it's different from doing it in ministry. When it's in ministry, it is centered and it is directed toward the person to whom Holy Spirit is giving you the word. But when you prophesy in the marketplace, it is directed to the industry, and it is it is a it is a personal uh, release in you that's going to enable you uh, to make your business more successful. So when I'm offering as a coach, when I'm offering, uh, when I'm having a group session like I did in August, um, the majority I, I'll just say the totality of all of my group sessions and my coaching sessions, it comes by the spirit. Even when I'm in the midst of coaching, even though coaching is centered toward my client and I'm trying to help them find the solutions and I'm, I'm, I'm there to uh, coach them to a breakthrough or coach them through solutions. And then I hear the spirit of God and most of the people that I coach are believers. And so, and they have an understanding of the, uh, you know, they have an understanding of the prophetic because some of them also are prophetic. And so when I speak to them, what thus saith the Lord, what the Lord is saying, I don't say what thus saith the Lord, but I speak to them, they recognize it is prophecy. And then it, it enables them to move forward. Okay. But if I was coaching a non-Christian and, and the Lord is giving me a specific word for them, I would just simply say, hey, this is an idea that, that I'm having. What does this say to you? And so even in that way, it, it gives me an edge and it causes them to come to know Holy Spirit. Now, on my job, I deal with a lot of non-Christians. And there was this this one uh, one young man. And most of the non Christian that I deal with, they have Christian beliefs, but it is mixed with New Age and the occult. And so they are actually most of the non Christians that I have met here. They have Christian beliefs that are mixed with the occult and uh, the New Age or darkness. And so they're actually. Uh, eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I don't judge them for that, okay? And there's one young man who is a, who's a rapper, and I call him a young man. He's in his 30s, and I'm in my 50s, so he's really in my son's generation. The, uh, he's in the millennial generation, and he, he often talks about, you know, he speaks from a new age perspective. And, uh, and so he tries to get me to agree with him, which I will not. But he is he's hes respectful as I am respectful to him. And, and so eventually uh, I was very careful of telling him what I do, you know, in business. And eventually he got it out of me. And so he says, hey, I want you to, you're going to be my coach. Okay. Now there's a door open. I didn't say I was going to be his coach. I didn't agree to it because I've never worked with a person who is that uh, that caught up in the new age. I actually almost had a client who was new age here from Atlanta. And um, 
but I saw more of an opening with her because even though she has some new age beliefs, her beliefs are more Christian. So it appears that she's just, you know, I don't know where the mixture comes from yet because I haven't been in Atlanta for three years, but it's interesting to see. So I might've taken her on as a client and then allow Holy Spirit to use me to bring her back to faith. But this particular young man who says, hey, you're going to be my coach. You're going to help me to write write a book because I was telling him that that's my most popular uh, program as a coach is helping writers uh, write their books. And so uh, I didn't agree with it, but the door has been open. Okay, now I have not spoken to him prophetically. Uh, I've not been led to speak to him prophetically, uh, but I am... Uh, but as I said, I am respectful. So when you have an edge, that edge is the ability to prophesy. Okay. Now, most, most traditional ministers would reject people. And when I was younger, I would have rejected that young man. I would have rejected that potential client because they're new age and they're in the occult. And I don't, you know, that's that's demonic, that's of the devil, and I don't have time for you and all of that. But I'm in a different place now where I am open to all people because I believe all people are created in the image of God. So whether, whether it's for ministry or the marketplace, uh, I don't have to agree with them, but if I can be the door to bring them back to Jesus or bring them back to God, I will do that. Prophecy gives me the edge. Now, now that what do I mean by, by prophecy giving you the edge? Well, the edge means that you are outside the limit because, see, there are both limits. There are probably more limits in ministry than in the marketplace. So many of you, instead of pursuing the prophetic, you're, you're pursuing an opportunity for ministry because that is what is expected of you. And if you're going to be a part of that of that, that group or that denomination or that congregation, then you have to want the things that they want to be accepted by them. But when, but when you are prophetic, prophetic begins to move you out of, out of the limitations that are placed on you in ministry. It even even in the marketplace, you will encounter limitations because there are there are persons who who even operate by limitations because they are so caught up in in comparing their business model with the business model of those who are successful, those who are wealthy. They limit themselves by the comparison, and and the prophetic actually brings you out because when you're prophetic in the marketplace, you're not as concerned. Matter of fact, comparison is not one of your issues. All right. You're, you're in the marketplace because you recognize God has given you a product. God has given you uh, a program. God has, God has given you uh, something that is tangible and can help other people. And so and so you are motivated by the success of, of not so much the success of networking, even though networking can be positive in the marketplace. But you are more you are more in tune with being your unique self because that's how God made you. And that's how you're going to present yourself in the marketplace as a unique being. In ministry, the prophetic also gives you, even though there are now many people who are prophesying, and some of them are prophesying like the old covenant prophets that prophesied out of the delusion of their mind, uh, and others are prophesying out of their flesh, and others are prophesying to make, a, to make money. And so again, but in the new covenant, when you are prophesying by Holy Spirit, there is a purity to your prophetic, and that is giving you an edge. And so the purity, I believe, is what, what is bringing us outside the limit. Not so much 
not so much the prophecy itself, but that we prophesy from a pure heart. And we prophesy because we accurately hear the voice of the Lord. We're not following. You see, you see, purity has a lot to do with motives. What are your motives? If your motive is to is to is to please the Lord, to hear the the, the voice of the Lord and to please him, then that brings you out of the limit. But most prophetic people are inside this limit of comparison and they desire popularity, they desire money, they desire power, they're using their gifts to manipulate. All right. And so what gives you the edge is your prophetic gifts. All right. So let me wrap this. Let me wrap this up. So when you're in the marketplace now, here's here's what here's uh, I want to share this one verse with you, because this one verse says prophecy is the one gift that all of us can operate in. Now, it is true that some of us operate in some of the other gifts by the manifestation of the spirit as a court as, as spoken in first Corinthians 12, but here in first Corinthians 14, 31, listen to what Paul said. This changes everything. He says, for you can all prophesy. So prophecy is the one spiritual gift that all of us can operate in. It is, it is a shame that more of us are not operating. More believers are not prophesying. More of you are waiting for a prophetic word, but you don't prophesy, okay? Paul says, for you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all be encouraged, okay? And so, and so when you are operating prophetically, I came into the prophetic in 2007. I had already been saved for uh, over 30, well, from, I got saved in 1975. So we're talking about more than 30 years. I started preaching in 1984. So we're talking more than 20 years as a preacher. I became, I, I went to my first church as a pastor in 1993. So I have been doing that uh, for more than 10 years. And when God brought me into the prophetic through the ministry of a prophet, and I asked the Lord to give me that gift, and the Lord gave it to me immediately. Immediately, I began to prophesy. I began to open my, I went to my church that Sunday, Baptist church, traditional, denominational, you know, conservative. And I prophesied, I don't even remember the first person I prophesied, but I started prophesying that Sunday and it changed my life and changed my ministry. <clears throat> and then the Lord began to reveal to me that I, there was an apostolic call on my life. Now it, it would be five years before I really knew what that meant. But without the prophetic, I would probably still be pastoring die, and dying in that traditional church. All right. But it was the prophetic that brought me into life and gave me life. And then I began to operate in the prophetic. And then uh, it really just ordered my entire life. And so now I want to help you that are in ministry and the marketplace. And here's the thing. I can't teach you to prophesy. Prophecy is in you because Holy Spirit is in you. All right, look at what, look at, look at um, in Acts 2, the day of Pentecost. This is where the world changed. All right, in Acts 2, 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days. We're in the last day. The last days began uh, when Holy Spirit came upon the church on the day of Pentecost. So for more than 2,000 years, we've been in these last days. All right that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, or I will pour out my spirit on all redeemed flesh, not on all human beings, but I will pour out my flesh on all redeemed uh, flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's when prophesying changed because in the, in the old covenant, only prophets prophesy. False prophets, genuine prophets. 
But on the day of Pentecost, when Holy Spirit came upon the church, we all received the ability to prophesy. We all can prophesy. And so you have to stir up the prophecy in you and you have to prophesy by faith, which means when you're getting an idea, when you're getting a word forming in your mouth for someone, you just have to have the faith to say it. You have to trust God that what you're saying is the truth, is from him. And then the more you do it and that and the person confirms it or the person then tells you what that means to them, then you will you will become more comfortable. You will become more comfortable. You will do it more. And you all should be prophesying. And then when you go into the marketplace, when, when you're in ministry, you should be prophesying, whether you are a preacher, a teacher, a singer, a psalmist, a minstrel, what, what, whatever function, whether you're in the, you know, whether you're the musician or you're in the, uh, you know, you're in the tech box, you're a technician, you should be prophesying because the spirit of God came in us. And now the sons and daughters, that's us. Okay, may prophesy. And so, and then when you're in business, when you're in the marketplace, then the prophetic will begin to give you ideas, give you innovation, give you creativity. Uh, it will begin to even, when, when you're working with people, uh, the prophetic will give you words for them. Now, you don't, you don't tell them, thus saith the Lord. You don't give them a word like that, but you just simply speak. When I was working, uh, I had I worked third shift, and uh, when I lived in South Carolina, we was building a fellowship, a ministry there, and uh, and so I would go to work, and the Lord would just give me word. I was giving I was giving words to a lot of young people. I was giving words to young women who were not living uh, in their in their true identity. They, they were living under the wrong gender, but the Lord would give me a word of knowledge for them. I remember. Uh, one word I gave to a brother, and it was so it was so strong on me. Uh, stay with me, and I finally said to him, "I said the Lord brought you here for business, not to be working." And I prophesied his business to him. Do y'all know he got fired the next night? I don't know what happened with him. I'm hoping that he received that word, but he did receive it that night. And he said, yes, he says, it's just been in my heart. I've been wanting to, to start my own restaurant. I love cooking. I do. And he moved to South Carolina from New York. And, uh, and so listen, God will give you words for people. I didn't tell him that I was a prophet or I was an apostle or any of that. I just said, listen, man, uh, sometimes I hear God and sometimes God would just speak to me about people. And this is what I'm hearing the Lord say about you. And so listen, you can prophesy in your business. You can build your business on the prophetic. God can give you the foundation. He can give you the project. He can give you the goals. He can give you the plan. He can even send you the people. You will begin to see the people in your dreams that's going to connect with you. And so the prophetic gives you the edge in ministry and the marketplace. I want to help you uh, to really move in ministry, move in marketplace, move in both or move in one. And so this is part of our coaching. Uh, it is, of course, a part of our mentoring, but we're not currently taking any mentees right now, even though we, we will uh, real soon be opening the door for mentorship, but if you're looking for a coach uh, and you want to learn more about ministry in the marketplace, then connect with me. Go to the description box and connect with me. I have enjoyed talking with you. Have an incredible weekend. Listen, join us next weekend uh, from the 15th, Friday the 15th to Sunday the 17th will be Rosh Hashanah 5784. So we will be doing activities, live activities here on YouTube uh, to celebrate the head of the year or the new year, the Hebrew new year or the head of the year 5784. And I hope that you will join us. Okay. Uh, again, please uh, join us on Substack and uh, reach out to us. Let us know how we can help you. Shalom.